I forgot the water. Three D. Jesus, this intro is fucking long. Oh, not the fucking outro as well. Get the fuck out of here. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> it's Neil's Reviews here. I got a special episode. Um... I'm debating whether or not to call this the COVID review, but I don't want to scare anyone. I just have a fever. I've had a fever for about a week. I've given up. I've given up a little bit. This is, uh, this has been fucking terrible. This sickness has totally fucked my sleeping schedule. I'm up all night, sleeping all day, waking up coughing, sneezing. The fever has gone down significantly. There were a few days there where I was really just not even human. But anyway, I got a bit of a guide here on the sort of shit I'm on. My daily uh, intake of substances. It's just really, it's not, it's not conducive to feeling like a human being. And maybe a brief story, maybe a quick catch up. It's been a while since I sort of wax poetic. I'm trying to um, trying to be a bit quiet these days. I'm trying to sort of keep my mouth shut. This is an antihistamine because I have a rash, and the rash is steadily uh, increasing across my body. It started on my ankles months ago, reached my thighs, then it got on my dick. And of course, I'm always fucking playing with my dick. So now it's on my hands. It's gone from my hands to like my upper arms. Now it's on my neck. And the other day, Jesus, it was on my fucking uh, chest and all sorts. It was fucking killing me. And I'm broke. I got no fucking money. I'm spending what little fucking coppers I get from the Norwegian government. You know, I'm living my best life on, on medication. Eating like a, a king that's being invaded. So that's an antihistamine for the itching. I've been on those for about six months now. So I'm always tired. And yet I still cannot sleep. What else do we have here? We have painkillers. We have ibuprofen. Ibooks. Oh dear. This isn't just for the sickness. This is because at the other day, <laughs> the other day at a party, look, I was not having a great day and I was like, okay, okay, I have to go to this party and I have to go to a rave afterwards. How am I going to get through this? Fucking shtick on the old faithful, the old Spider-Man outfit. Yes, I got that. a bit of a laugh. Little did I know that people were going to really take to the thing. Motherfuckers were, it was a Spanish party. Everyone was like, oh my god, it's a Spiderman. A Spiderman the whole night, the whole night. Oh my god, it's the real a Spiderman. Wow. Yes, I got that. Uh, so as you can see, I'm still fucking wearing the damn thing. And usually at parties, I don't have the best time. And it was strange, you know, it's difficult being yourself all the time in front of so many new people. 
But like I had a great time at this party and everybody was super happy and it was just strange to see like you know, I'd have the mask on and people would go like, Oh my god, he actually sounds like Spider Man too. Take the mask off. Holy shit, he fucking looks like Spider Man too. And then uh, it was fun, but it just made me think like, oh dear God, I go to parties all the time. Normally people are never this fucking jazz to see me. And it's like, oh dear, what, what happens when uh, a child that is born in not the best circumstances, not the best household, wh what happens when an individual like that develops somewhat of a disassociative personality, somewhat of a, a shifting um, gaze and then suddenly they become they, they put on a, an outfit that speaks to them the core of their personality the, the like the the arbiter of what they wanted to be when they were younger and suddenly the personality becomes whole so it's nice but at the same time you can't be a grown man that needs to wear a spider-man suit to talk to women but it was nice. It was nice. Lots of chicks. Lots of drunk women going, oh my god, this is Spider-Man. <laughs> it's awful. So here's a... Here's a Repsol. For my throat and because they're delicious. Oh, Jesus, this fucking suit is so warm. Oh my god. And like going out while I was sick and wearing a fucking sweatsuit and dancing all night. Felt so fucking bad. So that's what the painkillers for. <sighs> Just fucking felt so physically weak afterwards. Oh, I could, I couldn't stand. My ankles were shot to shit, dancing fucking hard style all night. Doing it, doing it fucking cool guy style, trying to prove something to who. So that's the ibuprofen and the antihistamine and the Repsol down. What else do I have here? Now this is Urax. Now I tend not to use this too often because it's expensive. But what I do here is when a particular spot is itching too much, I'll apply the Urax and I'll let that sit. And that, that takes away the itching completely. But I don't know how. And I hope it's not a steroid cream, because I know that those can be very, uh, very unhealthy. Oh, it says here to store it in very specific circumstances. I just kind of keep it in my room. And my room is fucking boiling. Hopefully it doesn't go off. It'll mutate me. <sighs> to be Spider-Man. To have so much power. And to wield such responsibility without a second's thought and to also have no real sort of strategy in mind. Back to what I was speaking on before, because that's all I can really talk about these days. That's all I've really been up to. I've been partying a lot this summer, which is nice because I haven't drank. I've smoked a bit of weed here and there, which isn't good because sobriety is very important to me these days. But it's a, just a slip up, you know. I wouldn't count it as anything too major. I do count it as a relapse, but I don't think it negates the sobriety. I think a bit of weed here and there is just sort of pathetic, more so than an outright relapse. But um, it's yet to be seen. I do want to quit it. But I've been partying a lot this summer, and I, had, I, I, I I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. I've met a lot of people. I've met a lot of new friends and good people. Very good people. People that I'm happy are a part of my life. One person in particular, but I won't get into the details. Um, but it's been good for me. At the beginning of the year, I was a real shut-in. I was really losing my mind. It had been so many years of... Uh, never really being in one spot for too long, both physically and mentally. So it's difficult to come back to earth from that. How do you talk to people who are so stable? But what I've realized is that everybody is kind of off the planet in their own way. And I'm just sort of glad that uh, I've reined it in somewhat.
But it's been nice. It's been nice to go out, speak to new people, come out of my shell in a lot of ways. There was a version of me years ago that dreamed of going out in public in a Spider-Man suit, but I was too nervous about my love handles. Um, so I suppose you could call that confidence, which is good. I think it's very good, actually. I, I'm at the very least now capable of speaking to strangers in a way that's neighborly. And I think that's important. I think now I, I reach a stage where I'll probably be able to work in the real world to support oneself with thine own hands. No greater pleasure. Get out there, have a few laps, man. Don't fucking sweat it. Oh, God. <coughs> but for the time being, I'm still quite sick. How would I rate the sickness? I'll give the sickness a 6 out of 10. I've been sicker than this, but God knows. God fucking knows this one has been tough. This one's been fucking gross. Sweating so much. So fucking warm all the time. Oh my God. My friends, they say we have to go out. We have to go out this week. And I say, oh, of course. Of course. Of course so we're going out this weekend. It's not it's not like it's not like I have anything better to do. I just feel so much worse afterwards, but it's good. Good memories. But yeah, people are fucking nuts, honestly. I don't understand what the fuck's going on these days. I, I every everyone just sort of at least maybe at least maybe it's just Scandinavia, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's this generation. But everybody seems to just clutch their drink like it's going to save their fucking lives. In any sort of social situation, they'll just stand there holding this fucking thing like this is the answer. No matter what the fuck happens or anything that I need tonight, more of this will keep me going. And it just gets crazier and fucking crazier. And I never really enjoyed that. I always took to that aspect of things a bit too aggressively where I wouldn't even then be able to socialize. I would just sit there with the fucking drink getting sadder and sadder and lonelier. Which I think a lot of these people are probably going through as well. But I have found that the best way for me to enjoy these situations is to ignore both primary reasons why I feel like a lot of uh, men at least, uh, but the, the, it ties into the women as well. But why a lot of people go to parties it's sort of the reason why they exist to get fucked up to drink, you know. It's a fucking socially excused event to get fucked up and, like, nobody gives a fuck. Everyone's sort of there with you. But also then to meet women, to meet men, and to try and get laid. So that's, like, hats off to anyone who can navigate those waters with self-respect and panache and style. But uh, for me, the, the, neither one of those things were ever... Uh, I, Neither one of those things were ever something I was particularly good at. Maybe you could call me a talented drinker. I could hold my own. But um, when it came to interacting with women in a setting where uh, it was like I needed to bang them, uh, just the whole thing sort of stank of manipulation. And it just made me very uncomfortable. And it would detract from the music playing and the, the whole point, which is sort of to have fun more so. So... I just have to, I have to sort of take that part out of it. I'm not here to drink. I'm not here to uh, grab somebody by the scruff of their neck and, you know, really, <laughs> really show, you know, everyone that I fuck, I fuck, which is such a big component involved in it, at least with young men. It's like, yeah, man, are you really going to like be inside a woman and like, you know, have that sort of intimate situation and just be drunk as shit and then kind of feel bad about it the next day, but then tell everybody, which is the important part. Tell everyone, oh yeah. King big shit's over here, knows how to wipe his ass. I fucking did it, guys. So, you know. Don't anybody uh, ask me too many questions, because... Things got a bit crazy last night. It's fucking disgusting. Um, and the amount of men I've seen like cheat on uh, their significant others this summer is fucking nuts. That's such fucking mind-bending. So I... Uh,
despite being able to socialize more concretely now and feel more comfortable out here in the city that sleeps on Sundays, big Oslo city, going to lots of parties and having somewhat of a community, uh, I'm starting to find it all a bit exhausting. I'm starting to sort of see a lot of bad sides of people, but also see good sides of people when they're just sort of happy and maybe they're seeing something new and they're outside for once. But just a lot of weird shit. <laughs> Fucking crazy business. Don't do MDMA. That's something I've really realized this summer. Don't ever fucking do MDMA. These people are weird. These people are so fucking weird when they're high as shit on that stuff. It's, um, they walk up to you like they're kind of shivering, but they'll swear to God to you that they're having the best fucking time, but they're just sort of there, staring all weirdly, having like the most intense conversation, but apparently to them, they're having a great time. But they look shell-shocked. They look like a scared animal. They look like a bird. <sighs> Walking around like a fucking pigeon. In intense, really fucking intense. 